In the repair shop today, a 20th century masterpiece in need of a conservator's masterclass. The only way I can tell there's a tear is when I look at the back here and I see that. And a 1940s tricycle that needs a bit of brute force. What on earth are you doing? We're bending, okay. it, bending it straight. Bending it straight, <laughs> nice, OK. <laughs> right, are yeah, we all on it? Right. No. Oh, blimey, right? No, it's not moving. First to arrive at the repair shop today is Sue Woods, laden with a well-weathered reminder of days gone by. Hello. Hello. I'm Steve. I'm Sue. Hi. Nice to meet you. She's putting all her trust in clockmaker Steve Fletcher. What have we got in here? We have got my grandparents' clock. It was a wedding present in 1917, okay, so it's 100 years old. Ooh. Any more bits? More bits. This is an interesting-looking clock. Um, it's not often that we get the, the three different yeah. dials on here, the, the clock, the thermometer and the barometer. Tell me a bit about the clock. Well, this was my paternal grandparents' wedding gift from the church in Glasgow where they went. We lived with her because she'd rented the house before my parents bought it, and I spent an awful lot of time with her. Went everywhere with her. This was always in the middle of the mantelpiece, and sitting in Grandma's front room was one of those big memories. Grandma became ill. She ended up with dementia, so she went into hospital, and eventually the living room got cleared, and after that, I don't know what happened. I, know, I thought it just got packed up and put away somewhere. About 40 years later, I found it in my dad's shed. He'd obviously, I don't know what happened, but he'd obviously tried to resolve the problem and not got very far. When you found it, what were your feelings? <sighs> I'm sorry to say I cried, actually, cos um, it was really upsetting. I know my dad would have tried to do his best, but... I wonder if he was <laughs> got it in this state and he was a bit embarrassed to bring it back out again but couldn't bear to part with it. I'm going to have a quick look at the, some of the things that, yeah. that, that might be wrong, then. This looks in uh, pretty poor condition. Mm. So this would have had an enamel mm. dial, a white enamel dial. Uh, we've got all the pieces of wood here, have we? So, good, that fits yeah. nicely and that fits that there. Fits. And have you got the piece for...? No, we're missing that one piece. Oh, that's mm. such oh, a no. shame. I've got a lot, a lot of work to do mm. to, to the clock. Um, but uh, I'll see what I can do on that. Brilliant, that would be wonderful. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye now. My grandmother was really proud of that clock. It had been a present from the church, and it, obviously to her it showed how much they thought of her. And she loved it, she really did take care of it, so it would be so nice to have it back in working order. Once he gets the clock back to his bench, the full extent of the job ahead begins to dawn on Steve. We've got the barometer, I need to replace the glass, the hand and the outer bezel. I've got the thermometer. Uh, I hope the tube is all right. Uh, the scale isn't. The scale has completely deteriorated. The clock is a massive job. With so many components needing to be replaced, Steve's drawing on some old reserves. I have literally tens of thousands of old parts that I've collected over my 45 years of doing clock repairs. I've got this old clock here, um, and because the dial is missing as well, I'm hoping that this dial will fit. I quite often um, see a clock in the charity shop and pick it up just to have as, as spares, so um, it's, uh, it's, it's day now, and um, I'm going to take the movement out, so this seems really quite drastic, but uh, I think this is the only way of doing it. There we go. There we are. We have a, uh, a dial that fits nicely in there now. Next into the repair shop, Barbara Reeve is bringing a treasured work of art that's had an unfortunate accident. She's hoping that painting conservator Lucia Scalisi can bring it back to life. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Lucia. I'm Barbara. Hello, Barbara. And this is the painting. Oh. Oh, wow. 
Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. isn't it? Yes. Beautiful thing. Yes. This is lovely. Isn't it just? Yes. It's Caputo. Oh, and it's signed, it's dated. Yes. Well, Caputo is an Italian, Neapolitan, I think, or that area right. of Italy. But I know that he uh, lived and worked in Paris, hence this oh, scene. Oh, Right. Yeah, for a long time. And it's quite a romantic yes. picture. It's very beautiful. Yes. I presume this is the same running through here, and that's the, 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 the other side, the embankment, yes. yes. Well, how did this come into your family or into your possession? Well, it belonged to my great-great-aunt originally. She bought it when she was living in Paris. When, do you know? Did uh, she well, I, the think, she, I think it would be around this time, because shortly after that she came to London and lived in London. So she could have bought it directly from the artist? I think yeah. she probably did, yes. So it's been in your family? Basically, since, since it, it inception, was, yeah, yes. yeah. And it came down through my grandmother and my father to me. And it has very special memories for me because my grandmother brought me up for the first 13 years of my life. So it really is special to me. It's and beautiful. Yes, it is, and isn't it? what has happened? Well, unfortunately, oh. uh, it was my fault. My father was moving and he decided to downsize. So right. he said I could have this painting. So we wrapped it up and put it on one side, and we were wrapping some other things. And I leant forward, and I knew I was not holding my balance, and I put my hand... Oh, so that's... And I felt something, and I thought, oh, my goodness me. Did this happen recently? Because yes. it, it looks recent. Oh, yes, within, really? within about the last three months. Oh, how heartbreaking. Yes. In the sense, this, this painting has been in my, in my life, on and off more or less all my oh, life, that, you yes. see. Oh. And it would be wonderful to have it restored, absolutely. I, I'm thrilled. I'll be really thrilled to work oh, on this. Oh, thank it's you really so beautiful. much. I look forward to seeing it repaired. Good, thank my you pleasure, very much. my pleasure. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. It was such an awful moment, you know. My father had had it for many years, and the day I get it, I damage it, which is terrible. To have the painting restored will be wonderful because I want to be able to pass that on to the next generation when it's time. Ulisse Caputo was an Italian artist based in Paris at the turn of the 20th century. Famous for his landscapes and elegant female portraits, his rich palette and bold use of light and colour brought him international recognition. So subject matter-wise, it's a, an absolutely delight. Um, central Paris, winter, there's men in the corner here sweeping snow it's a really lovely subject but what i can see as a conservator and what, what i'm looking for is how the artist painted it but the figure of this woman which is a really beautiful s-curved shape to get you focusing on that um she's very thinly painted and what happens when the paint is squeezed out of the tube and the artist wants to use it thinly sometimes they over thin it and when it dries it cracks so these are drying cracks that's a technical problem, and there's nothing, you know, it's not bad, it's just a, an issue, but it's secure. I don't have to work on that, it's absolutely fine. There are fingerprints in the paintwork, and these must be the artist's fingerprints. There's actually a couple on her face, and certainly in her garments. And I'm wondering if he modelled this figure with his fingers before he sketched, you know, he sort of sketched it in with his, his fingers as to where he was going to place her and then painted it. It's very unusual to have fingerprints like that. But yeah, it's, it's an absolute delightful painting and I can't wait to get started. But the priority is to get this tear repaired. Steve is attempting to breathe new life into a 100-year-old barometer clock that's seriously under the weather. He's making headway with the mechanisms, but the damaged mahogany case is going to need the expert eye of woodworker Will. Hey. Is it a clock? It's a clock. It's a barometer and thermometer. Three in one. Absolutely. Right. So, um, I've got this bit. OK. I've got this bit here. Right. But I haven't got that bit. Oh, I thought you just wanted me to stick those two oh, pieces no. on. Sorry. So, what you're missing from there is pretty much that. Right there. Exactly. Leave it with me. Excellent. Thank you. That's right, Steve. With so much to do on this job, Foreman Jay ensures things keep ticking over. So you getting on with Sue's clock barometer then? Yeah, all right. Um, I'm just going to check if the barometer is actually working. There's, um, there's a, a, a vacuum chamber in here, that, that shiny circular thing. 
Yeah. When the pressure is high, you know, the air pressure is high, yeah. um, it forces it down. And basically that pushes this lever down and it turns the hand w one way or the other. It turns it to where it needs to go on here, wherever it's sunny, clear, dry and rain. Exactly. OK. Yeah. So how are you going to test it? Basically, I'm going to increase the um, air pressure. I'm going to pop it in here. I'm going to seal it. So I'm going to push on there and see if the hand moves at all. Move a little bit. I mean, a little bit. You see it? It's not turning enough. It is turning a little bit. Yeah. I think the best thing is if I if I strip it down, clean it, and then test it again. OK. Cool. Over on the woodwork bench, Will is forging ahead with the clock's casing. So what I have here is a piece of mahogany that I've actually cut to the same width as this piece I'm trying to match it to. Um, and with my carving chisels, I'm just starting to shape it up. So now I have um, roughly the right shape that I need. I'm going to stick that on the side, and uh, once that's dried, then I can use a chisel to blend that in further, because even though that looks like a perfect match, it probably needs a little bit of tweaking once it's on there. Tasks are steadily being ticked off this mammoth to-do list. Steve has replaced the original thermometer scale with um, this lovely ceramic plate. The original must have fit in there perfectly, whereas this replacement is slightly too wide. So what I need to do now is um, slightly widen the wood on the inside with a chisel. Um, I want it to fit quite snug, but not too snug, because I don't want any extra pressure on the ceramic. Right, this should fit now. Ah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. And that's one step closer to finishing the uh, barometer clock. While some of the items that pass through the doors of the repair shop have met with unfortunate accidents, others arrive simply suffering from the ravages of time and years and years of use. The next arrival is a prime example, a battered old childhood favorite belonging to Caroline Sambrook Hurst. Hello. Hello. I'm Steve. Hello, I'm Caroline. Hi. Hello, I'm Eric. Hello, Eric. And we've got your tricycle oh, I here. I see you have. Caroline's brought in her three-wheeler for the attention of Steve and vintage bike expert Eric Van Bommel. Bit of a classic, I think. <laughs> what can you tell us about it? Well, Christmas morning, 1954, is the first time I remember it, and there was this Christmas present for me. And looking a little better than this it does at the moment. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. It has been well used, but not all by me. My parents had a farm and riding school, so I could ride it round the farm and then go down the village with my brother. You could put things in the boot, and it had my toys in here, and even the pet dog could go in there, the terrier, not with the lid shut. <laughs> And what you could do, another child could sit on it and hold on to there. Ah, is that why this okay. um, slightly dented Probably. here? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so this has got a lot of yes. memories for you, hasn't it? It certainly has. So how come you've kept it for such a long time? It's been kept so long because it has gone through the family, all through different stages. Looking at it, I'm pretty sure this is a Triang, which is a famous British brand. And this was made in the late 40s, I think. Yeah. And it would have been yeah. one of their bigger selling models back then. So. Really? Well, on the internet, they're very rare, and people have mentioned that they had them, but they've never kept them, so this is quite special. Uh, it is special, yeah. What's, what are your plans with it? Well, what I'd really like to be able to do is have Thomas, my grandson, be able to have the bike to ride, and that would be great fun. I will definitely try our best for this. Mm. It will be a pleasure to work on it. Thank you. Leave it with us, and um, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Uh, Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Thomas, who's five, has tried to ride the tricycle, and it's so difficult, the pedals won't go round, and he gets... He so tries, he's so hard to try and get it going. And to think, to see his face, to see if, if he could get on that tricycle now and then actually pedal it and go somewhere on it, marvellous. So, Eric, what are the main areas that you've got to uh, repair on this? 
All right. Obviously, it's quite usable, but cosmetically, it's extremely tired. So it involves a strip down, complete disassembly. We'll clean up the frame, we'll repaint the frame. Following that, we'll rebuild the wheels with nice, clean spokes. And lastly, the, probably the most difficult job, is trying to repair this little beautiful little boot on the back here. OK. New hinges, replacement hinges, panel beating, and paint it back to the original cream. The inside will do as well, get it all painted up, and we should have it looking absolutely sparkling. OK, let's get it over to your bench. All right? Yeah. Oh, you can manage it. Oh, easy, easy. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See ya, thanks. Eric has 35 years' experience of fixing up broken-down bikes. He's plied his trade in his native New Zealand, the United States, and now here in the UK. But restoring this beaten up old trike is still going to be an uphill struggle. First, Eric has to break it down into its component parts with some gentle persuasion. It's relatively delicate, but in some parts, it's as good as the same strength as when it was when it was new. And here we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Lovely. Right. Oh, it's a bit dark and murky in here. It's not going to be easy because it's very, very rusty. The last wiggle. There we are. Left and right, back. And here we go. Lovely. Meanwhile, Lucia is starting her repair of the painting by early 20th century artist Ulisse Caputo. There's a tear running through this Parisian scene, and before Lucia can begin on the artwork, she first must fix the damaged area of canvas. I've got my adhesive in here, it's isinglass, which is a fish glue, and this is acid-free tissue, and I'm just going to position it along the edge of the tear, and this will hold all those little fractured flakes of paint because I want really to put as little of my work onto this painting as I can. With all these things, it really is less is more because I have to take this off afterwards. And if I put absolutely loads on, it's just going to take more getting off. So that, that will do for that. That will hold it all in place. It will dry in a short while. And then I'm going to do a moisture treatment on the back. Once the glue is dry, Lucia uses a heated spatula to remove moisture from the back of the painting and flatten any loose threads. Then she applies a heat-sealed adhesive to stop it fraying. I use silicon release paper on top of it so it doesn't stick to anything. And the painting sat on release paper as well. And then the heat will activate the adhesive and attach the whole thing to the canvas. And if I show you what it looks like from the front, but it's all quite flat now. So that's the tear from the front. It's nice and flat and it's held in place. So I'm going to start the cleaning. I'm going to do a surface clean first and then start to remove the varnish. It's basically taking off years of dirt, in this case, probably the best part of 100 years of dirt and a discoloured varnish. So then we're down to the natural colour, but it's always a little bit dried out, so it needs a varnish back on the surface. And you'll see as I'm brushing it out that the colours become saturated by the varnish and it becomes much more readable. I mean, it's just lovely. Once the varnish is dry, Lucia can start to disguise her repair. I'm using an acrylic filler. It's ready-made. I like it because it's very quick and easy to use and I can rub it down easily afterwards. This first layer I'm putting on, I'm actually just pushing it into the weave to close the, the weave up. And then what I'll do is put another layer on when that's dry, just to build up. I mean, we're talking about microns here, just to build the surface up so that it's more or less the same level as the paint layer. And then I can retouch it. In crude terms, it is a bit like doing a, a filling as you would um, in your DIY situations at home. So I'm making sure that this filler is right up to the edges, joining with the paint layer. So I'm really pleased with the way it's going so far. A broken-down barometer clock 
has brought Steve and Will together on a very complicated rescue mission. Steve is overhauling the barometer, thermometer and clock, while Will mends the marred mahogany casing. Cool. Doesn't that look good? Yeah? Look at that. Ooh. That is nice and lovely, smart. Lovely, 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 lovely. That's the moulding that I replaced. Go on, show me the other one. OK. Yeah? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you just got to take it up from there and put it on there. <laughs> that is a cracking job. Lovely. So that's my part, Dan. Good. Now okay. over to you. I know. Thank you. That's right, Steve. Cheers. Next on Steve's long to-do list is to restart the clock mechanism, which hasn't ticked for decades. This all being well, should tick when I wind it up. This is the moment of truth. There we are, ticking straight away. Beautiful. I've done this all my life and, and come to this moment so many times and it still gives me such satisfaction when I put the key and turn it and it starts ticking straight away like that. At the back of the workshop, bike expert Eric has taken apart the broken down child's trike. He's now trying to reinvent its tired old wheels. I'll take the tires and tubes off, cut the spokes out, and I'll get the rims repainted and back into the traditional red. But I think we'll have a, a good bike by the end of it all. Eric has enlisted the help of metal expert Dominic Chenier. But the bike's battered old boot may be beyond even his skills. It's in a really bad way. Um, the more I look at it, the more damaged bits I can see. It's obviously been used a lot. It's split and cracked, uh, dented. So I'm going to have to cut a lot of this out and remake uh, sort of new patch like repair panels to, to put in there bash this top around and try and get that into somewhere near straight again. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of work to do on this. Daunted but not defeated, Dom sets to work cutting away any perished metal. I've managed to drill out the spot welds around this, this lip at the edge, which has meant this has come out in one piece, which is great because it's allowed me to template from nice fresh steel. So now I can just put this new this new piece back in. So that it's pretty much now it's ready to weld. Now the trike is in pieces, Eric takes it off site to a specialist spray painter to restore it back to its original colour. Hey Curtis. All right. Got a classic early 1950s tricycle here. I need it all sandblasted and brought back to the original colours. Got the lovely, no problem. First, the old paint is sandblasted off. Before the parts are sprayed, the appropriate vintage shades. They look amazing, Curtis. Thank you very much. No worries. Cheers. Back at the repair shop, Lucia has fixed the tear in the painting. Now she must match the colours of the original artist's palette to blend in her repair. Now I know from experience what the artist has used in this painting. Um, so all the colours that are in the woman's garments, the alizarin crimson, the Prussian blue, the yellow ochres, all these colours are then diffused out into the background. Um, or the other way around, they've actually been brought into her figure because she's painted on top of this landscape. So the whole landscape was painted first and she's on top. Lucia first applies watercolour to create the base layer. I've done a little bit of reconstruction in the tree because the branch, a section through the trunk was missing and some of the branches were missing. So I've just sort of worked them up. For the final finish, she's using a complex palette of acrylic paints. 
looks quite pale. But when I put it on top of this uh, watercolour, it will take on the undercolour to a certain extent. And I can see just doing this, it's a little bit too blue, but it's, uh, it's getting there. After many long hours of labour, the once dilapidated barometer clock is finally ready for reassembly. With parts cannibalised from donor clocks, Steve begins by rehousing the gauges, starting with the barometer. I'm just about to put this unit in. Um, I've had to modify it. I've cut a slither off of it because I've managed to find a new bezel and glass to go on that. And that goes on really well now. Um, but the original setup, the, the dial was connected somehow to the bezel itself. I've made a modification. I've put these claws in, and um, these claws actually correspond to some pads that I've made in the back there. And you can see it sits nice and neatly there. Just for fun, I put um, the repair shop on there. Um, I probably won't tell Sue, but it'll be interesting to the next clockmaker who opens it up and sees it. Um, and you quite often find clocks with little messages from the last clockmaker. You'll often get a message saying, um, beware of this clock, it's been nothing but a problem. But this clock's problems are almost over. All that remains is for Steve to make a few final adjustments to the mechanisms. So, Steve, we are at a crucial stage here. We are. You know the, the, the barometer you helped me with test, testing? Yeah. That is in there. Now, I found a nice old hand. That came off of an old barometer. Cool. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to find out what the pressure is. It's 30.05. All right, so you've just set it to that. I have. So this it's, it's pointing to fair at the moment, and okay. um, it's, it's good weather today, so... Uh, All right. Yeah. It's, it's correct today, but you might have it pointing over to fair, and it might be raining. So it's, okay. it, you, you, can't, you, you, you can't look at this and put your washing out and think, it's going to be fine. Is it any good, then? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's handy. It gives you an it's idea. Handy. Yeah, it gives you an idea. It's, believe me. It's... For me, what I'll do is I'll just look out the window before I hang out my smalls. Yeah. yeah? If... <laughs> <laughs> the barometer clock arrived in a sorry state frozen in time for over 40 years. Its owner, Sue, has returned in the hope that waiting for her is a beloved old friend, come rain or shine. Hello, Sue, how are you? Steve, how are you doing? It's nice I'm to see good. you again. Hi. Oh, what have you got for me? Yeah, right, <laughs> I'll just get something for you. Oh. All right. So, under here, I have your clock. Clock? Can you hear anything? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ticks. Right, I'm going to uncover it, let you what? have a look at it in its full splendour. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I don't believe that. That is absolutely fantastic. You are a genius. What has he managed to do there? Yes, Will's done a lovely job with the oh, case. Good, isn't he? It's a long while since I've seen it like this. If you didn't know better, you'd think you'd nipped out and got another one. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, that's the, you know, that's how Granny would have seen it when she got it. Yes. You can see the mechanism oh, oh good. Is ticking away beautifully there. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And keeping good time as well. Excellent. Granny would be most pleased about that. You've had it. You will get hugged. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you so much. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh. Where's the woodwork man? Is he around? Will, would you yeah. like to pop over here? Sounds like I'm in trouble for something. No, you're not in trouble. It's wonderful. You've yeah. done a wonderful job on the woodwork oh. on it. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll get it all wrapped up safely for you, yes. and um, you can take it home and, and get it onto your mantelpiece. We'll do that. I can't believe that Steve's done such a fantastic job on the clock. I was absolutely shocked, rigid. It's brilliant. It was like being about five or six again, standing looking at the clock on the mantelpiece, checking the time and the weather so we could go out somewhere. My grandmother would be absolutely ecstatic. She'd be really, really pleased that it's been repaired to such a brilliant standard.
Outside in the metalwork area, Dom is making headway with the vintage tricycle's boot. So this is coming on really well now. I've got the, the new repair panels that I've made, the floor, and this front piece here are now in, ground back, and looking really good. It's starting to look a lot more solid than it did. There's a good few dents in this front panel, and this top piece was all dented. I've been going around with various different hammers, depending on what I'm doing to get into different areas. There's different heads, uh, and then with different dollies, which are these, uh, which you would use on the other side of the metal as the hammer. Different shapes, depending on the curve of what you're, what you're trying to beat. So I'm just working around now, trying to get this nice and smooth again. But uh, on the whole, it's looking an awful lot better. I'm really happy. I just need to tackle this lid now. Which looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to fit quite well. With all of the components freshly painted and back in the workshop, Eric can now get on with the job of putting the tricycle back together again. This is one of the more critical parts of the entire reassembly. Little bearings, a bit of grease, making sure everything fits back into space. The bearings help with the steering. They make it all nice and smooth and controllable at speed. So we'll just and slowly and gently, without losing anything, insert the bearings into here. Whoa, yes. Put the top cap on, screw it all down, all the while keeping the grease from being shaken. So I'll just adjust this up, see if everything's nice and snug. Oh, oh dear. As you can see here, it's got a big gap in the fork, and the bearings are exposed. Not a good sign. Before he can continue the rebuild, Eric's going to need some help straightening out the bent steering post. Hi, Steve. I wonder if I've got a bit of a problem. I wonder if you could help me with it. OK. As you can see, that is not straight. Wow. That is really bent. That is a common fault with old bicycles. They've ridden into a wall at some stage, probably <laughs> several stages. Was there a lot of riding into walls? There's then? a lot of 10 speeds <laughs> and tricycles just, that's the way they stopped in the yeah. old days. So <laughs> we've got to get that trued up so the bearings work, the steering works, and we can stop safely once again. OK. Uh, let's put it in the vice over there. Yeah, OK. Yeah. A bit of brute force may be the answer, or it could spell disaster. Gently, gently, gently. Right, so that's it, and you okay. have to... You tell me when. OK. <laughs> it's not moving at all. It did. Oh, did it? Yeah, I think so, yeah, it looked like. Um, I think it's going to need both of us, right? OK. Mm. Ready? Yeah. Crikey. Oh, my God. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? We're bending, okay. it, bending it straight. Bending it straight, <laughs> nice, OK. Can I help? Do you yes, need to hold the can. bench or something? Oh. Uh, or push from the other side. Push, yeah, push from, yeah. Yeah. Right. Are we all on it? Right. Oh! No, it's not moving. I think you need to heat it up. It runs the risk of the paint, but... Let's give it one more go. Go on, one more go. go. OK, are we all on it? Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was yeah. That, that moved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've fixed it, boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not, not a scratch on the no paint. No scratch, no, and no paint. Yeah. <laughs> Thank it, goodness. Yeah. Beers are yeah. on me. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Remember that. Cold one. <laughs> Lucia has been painstakingly restoring Barbara's great-great-aunt Annie's painting. The canvas had a rip running through it and was in need of some delicate repair work. Looks like you've almost finished Hi. Barbara's painting. I have nearly yeah. finished. a little bit more mm. varnishing I've got to do. I don't know if you remember the tear that was in it, yeah. but I did the tear repair, so that's quite neat. So what's left to do? I need to put another spray coat of varnish on it and just sort of bring that tear up a little bit because it's still a little bit matte in parts. The only way I can tell there's a tear is when I look at the back here and I see that. But this is clean. It looks beautiful. Good. Barbara's returning to the repair shop to see if the accidental damage she inflicted on her precious painting has now been made good. How nice to see nice you to again. Nice to see you. Welcome yeah. back. Lovely, Lovely to see, see you. you. Yeah. Is this Jay? Oh, yeah. You're right. Nice, yes, yeah. pleased to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Yes. So, I'm well, so excited. Well, so I've got uh, my fingers crossed. Yes. You ready? Yes. 
Wow, look at that. You cannot see a thing. Well, that, that is, is the idea. amazing, it's, it's, isn't it? Oh, what a wonderful job you've done. I'm glad you like <gasps> it. I think that because the damage has been repaired, your eye is not going to immediately go to that area no. anymore. It was very dominating, it wasn't was, it? It was, absolutely. Yeah. And you've cleaned it for me. Yeah, it cleaned it? really quite well. So you're yeah. really seeing its true colours now, which They're were lost. They're beautiful, aren't they? I can't believe it. And you can see so much on here. You could never see this, the shape of this woman properly before, could you? And the colours are just so vibrant on there. And there's so much more detail, and the, the shading and the colouring is beautiful. And also the movement in her yes. clothes is just yes. beautiful. Yes, oh, it is. And actually, now, you, before, this, this scarf merged right in, and you couldn't see the shape of her so much, could that's you? That's right. It so that's really flat come flat out now. And, and this must be how she saw it. Well, you know, I thought it's really... Uh, <laughs> it really is emotional, that yeah. is. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. Well, and I can't like thank you enough. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's my my father will be delighted as well to see it like this. Yeah. He's 95 now, so, oh, you know, and he's never seen here. it like this. He's oh. never seen it like this. It, it, it's a great relief that it's been, it's been repaired, believe you and me. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I would ever have been allowed to forget it by my father if it hadn't been restored. And I just love this picture, and it just... It's just so many memories of when I was younger. Yeah. Yes, and it just connects me straight back, straight back. Absolutely. Well, thank you for bringing it in. Thank you ever so much. No and problem. thank you so well, much for what you have done oh, for me. Oh, my pleasure, it's Barbara. Wonderful. And it's great to hear it. the story as yeah. well. Thank you, yes. I love it. I am absolutely ecstatic about having this picture back and in the condition it's in. It's wonderful to see. It's beyond all my dreams, that is. I'm very relieved because I know my father will forgive me now, especially as it looks so wonderful now. He'll be delighted. He might even thank me for doing it. You never know. <laughs> Bike expert Eric is putting the finishing touches to the vintage tricycle. So here we have the boot, reconditioned, repainted, panel beaded. Now it looks beautiful like new now. So we'll just fix it with the old original fittings. Hopefully it goes in together. Quite fiddly actually. But we're getting there. got ourselves a nice British made saddle, very, very traditional, the way all saddles are made back up until about the, the 60s. This is starting to look really cool. Hi Steve. Whoa, that's looking what fantastic. You, it is. It's a, a massive labour of love, but it's looking very, very tidy. That's Come incredible, isn't it? So, the red rims are a nice bit. The white red rims are great, absolutely great. Nice saddle. Yeah, the class. That's very, very yeah. class, yeah. So. And these forks, the, the straightening of it worked all right? The straightening worked fine, by the way. It's there, it's vibration free, it's nice and tight, Excellent. nice and safe. The brakes work, squeeze the lever. There we are. Excellent. I think you've done an absolutely fantastic job. Well thank you. Done. Yes, thank you very much. Really well done. Yeah. After 64 years, the wheels were in danger of coming off this tired old trike. But a bespoke restoration means it's ready for another generation. In Stratford-upon-Avon, its owner Caroline is awaiting a first look at the three-wheeler with her grandchildren, Thomas and Keisha. If I could see the tricycle restored, it would be absolutely amazing. I'd be really thrilled. How did so, it look like when you were a child? Well, when I was a child, it was just all lovely and gleaming, cream and red and chrome. It had shiny bits on it. It would be great to be able to see a grandchild ride it and be able to ride it properly. I feel a bit excited to ride it. I don't know. What's it going to be like? 
Look what I found. Mm. What do you think of this? Yeah. What do you think is inside here? I think we better get the covers off, don't you? Yeah. Come on, then. Oh, thank you. Look at this. Oh, my goodness me. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. How much? Can you remember what it was like before? Oh, and... dirty. <laughs> look at this. That's a bit cleaner. <laughs> I didn't expect this. But I know thinking there. Look how beautiful it is now. How beautifully painted. That is absolutely lovely. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I was just overwhelmed. I wouldn't have thought it was possible to make it look so good and so rideable again. Are you going to try it? Yeah. See what do you think? Put your feet on the pedals. Right, off you pedal. Come on. Here you go. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. It was amazing. It was the tricycle again. I would never have thought that I would have seen my grandchildren playing with one of my toys. That is just such an astounding feeling. It makes you feel really sort of warm and fuzzy inside.